Hello there, Year 9 and 10. Welcome back to another online lesson uh, from St. Leonard's Academy, Physics Department. Uh, so last week we did uh, CP2 forces. Uh, we looked at Newton's uh, three laws. This week we are looking at uh, the topic CP3 energy. Next week we'll do CP4 waves. The following week we'll do CP5 uh, electromagnetic waves. I hope you've been enjoying the lessons so far. I think we've been doing some really great work and I've seen from the work that you are uh, handing in that they really seem to be helping with your um, with your understanding of the, of the content. So very well done to those who are still going with the lessons. Um, keep it up until the end of term and we'll do a mock paper one, which will really help you guys feel like uh, you've achieved something this term. So this lesson, as I said, we're going to look at CP3 energy. Uh, and within that, uh, we're going to focus in, because we can't do a whole topic, unfortunately, we're going to focus in on energy stores, energy transfers, useful versus wasted output energy, and efficiency. Uh, I think it's going to take us an hour. Hopefully we'll get through it a bit quicker. I'll try to move fast. And the, the equipment that you need is a pen, paper, scientific calculator. The one on your phone is OK if you do not have a scientific calculator. However, a uh, scientific calculator would be better than uh, an individual one. And ideally, a quiet, clear workspace. As always, our... It's a bit slow, got a new laptop, it's a little bit slow. As always, our work expectations, uh, just before we get started, from St. Leonard's Academy Science Department, is we'd like to, you to try to complete three hours of science work per week. And that can be in the revision booklets that we've given you. It can be the online lessons such as this one, or it can be your own work. For example, uh, Oak National Academy or BBC Bite Size, if you prefer using uh, their materials than ours. OK, so there are eight main types of energy store. This is ways that we can store energy. Many of them you're probably familiar with. Uh, some of them you might be less familiar with. I would like you, uh, when I say so, when I say pause, to pause the video and write a, um, draw a knowledge, um, a mind map with energy store in the middle and eight arrows coming off it. And then use the pictures around the outside. So we've got eight pictures. See if you can uh, think of, See so if you know the eight different energy stores based off the pictures. I will help you out. Uh, don't worry, we'll give you the answers uh, if you don't know them, but give it a go. So, for example, these skydivers, what kind of energy do you think they have when they jump out of the plane? It begins with a G. The uh, slingshot, what kind, of what kind of energy do we store when we pull, this, pull the uh, slingshot back? Uh, what energy might I get from a magnetic field if I pull something, if I pull uh, a magnetic material away from a magnet? What could this indicate? Looks like lightning, but what kind of energy store might that be? This looks like uh, some kind of waste. What kind of waste might that be? This motorcycle rider is probably going quite fast. What kind of energy would we associate with something moving? Uh, this picture of a match uh, is a energy transfer or energy store, sorry, do with temperature. Begins with a T, but it's not temperature. And in the burger, what kind of energy might we store in a burger? OK, uh, you can pause the video now and try to come up with the eight different types of energy store. If you complete it, you can have a go at the PQ. What are the sources of these types of energy? Okay, gonna hope I'm going to rely on you having paused the video and completed the mind map, or at least given it a go. The eight energy stores that we have. We have elastic potential energy. I'll just put them up. Magnetic energy from the magnet. We have internal or thermal energy, that's our match 
per head. So thermal energy is the energy that an object has due to its temperature, due to the vibration of the molecules within it. We have chemical potential energy. Now that is the energy in our burger. So it's energy stored in the chemical bonds uh, in a substance. So for example, in the fats and in the carbohydrates of our burger. We've got kinetic energy. Kinetic energy sounds kind of powerful, sounds like movement, kinetic, something moving. Kinetic energy is the energy associated with something which is moving, due to it moving. So if I'm, st if I'm sat still, I have uh, less energy than if I'm moving. And the faster I move, the more energy I have, and that's called kinetic energy. Electrostatic here is the energy something has due to its position in an electric field. So that's what we've put with the uh, lightning strikes here. Elastic potential energy. Uh, here is the energy something has due to its deformation. So uh, by deformation, we mean changing something's shape. To change the shape of the elastic on a slingshot, we have to apply energy to deform it, to change its shape. And that energy is stored in elastic potential energy. Gravitational potential energy, number seven, is the energy something has due to its position in a gravitational field. So the skydivers, when they fly up uh, to the top of their jump, they have a lot of gravitational potential energy due to their position in the Earth's um, gravitational field. As they jump, that will be transferred into different kinds of energy, particularly kinetic energy. And the final energy store was nuclear. If you've got all eight, Give yourself a clap on the back. Well done. So uh, nuclear nuclear energy is the energy associated with the um, arrangement of protons and neutrons in an atom's nucleus. Okay. And just some examples there for, for the types of energy. As I said, kinetic energy is the energy something has due to it moving. For example, a motorcycle and rider in this case. And chemical energy is the energy stored in the chemical bonds of a substance. For example, the fats and carbohydrates of this burger, even if it's a cartoon burger. OK, what I'd like you to do now, it's time for you to do something else. I'd like you to look at this picture. Uh, what you can see is uh, it's an infrared picture. OK, so that shows us the temperature of the image. Here is a boy with a ball, a basketball. You can hardly see the basketball because it's almost the same temperature as the surroundings. Uh, this is before on the left. We see before bouncing. Uh, then on the right, we can see after the boy's been bouncing the ball, what's happened to the ball. So I want you to try and answer these questions. What can we conclude from these pictures? What are the energy transfers? when we bounce a ball. So from what energy store to what energy store when we bounce a ball? And I'd like to imagine that we're not putting too much force in, we're just kind of letting it drop. Mm -hmm. And what is happening to the energy? Where is it going from and to? Uh, I'd like you to pause the video and give that a go, uh, and then we'll resume and I'll give you some answers. Okay, you can pause the video now. OK, let's go through. What can we conclude from these pictures? The, m the most obvious thing, so there's lots of things these, these pictures tell me, but the most obvious difference is that the ball has a brighter, ready colour after bouncing, which means uh, in an infrared image, it means it's hotter. So the ball has increased in temperature as a result of bouncing. That's what my, that's my conclusion would be. Uh, when, a, when I bounce a ball, it gets hotter. You might not have known that before, but that's that's true. It's a case we can measure it. What are the energy energy transfers when bouncing a ball? At the top of its at your bounce, it's going to be um, gravitational potential energy. We drop it, and it gets transferred into kinetic energy as it falls. It speeds up as it falls. Just before it hits the ground, all of that gravitational energy, gravitational potential energy, will be transferred into kinetic energy. Then, when it hits the ball. When it hits the ground, the ball will be deformed, it'll be squashed. And that means it will be transferred, the kinetic energy will all be transferred into elastic potential energy. As, the, uh, as it's deformed, it wants to bounce back, it'll bounce back to its normal shape from elastic potential, 
back to kinetic and then from kinetic it's moving up now it'll go up back to gravitational potential energy as the ball comes back up when it's bounced now that doesn't account for the fact it's hotter when the ball deforms when it changes shape squashes at the bottom uh, it takes energy to make it change shape and some of that energy is um, is transferred to the ball as uh, heat energy as thermal energy now energy cannot be created or destroyed so the fact that when we drop it from a height and the energy transfers to gravitational potential kinetic elastic kinetic uh, gravitational the fact that we've also got some as thermal energy in the ball now means that the ball is not going to bounce quite as high when it bounces back up because we've we've lost some energy we've wasted some energy in that thermal energy we won't get the same gravitational potential energy out as we put in what's happening to the energy it's being transferred it's changing forms as we bounce the ball and ultimately it's, it's heating up the ball okay so we looked at the last um, little mind map that we did there at the start we looked at energy stores now i want to look at how energy is transferred between stores energy can be transferred from one store for example kinetic energy to another store for example gravitational potential energy now as one store empties another store fills so for example the ball as i drop it the gravitational potential energy transfers to kinetic energy gravitational potential energy goes down as it falls and kinetic energy goes up as it falls the process by which energy transfers from one type to another we call a pathway and there are four main energy pathways i've matched them up approximately with these pictures so what i'd like you to do you may not have any idea what i'm talking about of course in which case you can just let the video play but what i'd like you to do is to pause the video and see if you can think of uh, see if you can match these four pictures to four ways that we might transfer energy. Uh, in fact, I'll give you the first one just to get us get us uh, started. So the first one is mechanical work. That's the man pushing a trolley. So a force moving an object through a distance. The man is pushing the trolley with a force and he's moving it along a distance. So mechanical work is one kind of energy pathway one kind of, of way that we can transfer energy from one store to another have a go look at the pictures and see if you can uh see if you can come up with the three other energy pathways you can pause the video now okay let's go through so this lightning strike hopefully you thought electricity uh and if you did you'd be most of the way there it's electrical work it is the work that charges do moving due to a potential difference. So if I have a potential difference, I have a high voltage, a low voltage, and the charge moves between the two, then I do electrical work. Heating. Due to different due to temperature difference caused by electric electrically or chemical reaction. Temperature difference caused electrically or by chemical reaction. So I can transfer energy, for example, from chemical bonds to uh, to the surroundings by heating makes sense chemical reaction goes off uh, the chemical bonds uh, are changed in form to something else and energy is given out to the atmosphere by heating or to whatever is around the chemical by heating and lastly number four with the light bulb what do we associate most with light bulb we associate uh, light and light is a form of radiation so energy transferred as a wave for example light infrared could also be sound so any kind of energy transfer uh, by a wave now what i'd like you to do is to copy out this mind map a separate mind map so you've got two you've got one with energy stores and you've got one with the energy pathways and energy pathways or transfers and you've got the eight stores and the four pathways because we'll need these going forward in the lesson you might also like to write down a quick definition of what an energy pathway is so you've got it up at the top here so pause the video 
and write down, complete your mind map for energy pathways. I'm going to trust that you've paused it and written it down. Okay, let's have a think. We can draw, let's have a think about what kind of energy stores and transfers we might have in a firework. I want to think, I want us to think of uh, from the bottom of the, from when the firework hasn't set off yet until it explodes. What kind of, what are the energy stores and what are the energy pathways? So how is energy stored and how is it transferred? Before the firework sets off, when it's just sitting on the ground as you've lit the fuse perhaps, you've got a huge amount of energy there stored within the firework. Think of the different energy stores, go back to your diagram, look at the different eight stores and think, how is it going to be stored? Is it going to be electrical? Is it going to be uh, electrostatic, nuclear? Is it going to be kinetic? It can't be kinetic because it's not moving. In fact, when it's sat there on the ground, the energy it has is chemical energy. So it has a, uh, a fuel, typically gunpowder, um, which has a, huge, a lot of energy stored in it due to the chemical bonds in the fuel. When we light it, we light the fuel up, chemical reaction happens, which causes heating. It's the energy pathway heating. The heating, now we've got our firework down on the ground, and it's uh, as the fuel is igniting, it heats the gas underneath it and it pushes the gas out. Sorry, heating goes to thermal energy, so it heats uh, the air underneath it and the, and the fuel itself gets hotter. And then it's still sitting on the ground here. And then the thermal energy starts to do mechanical work as the hot gases, it gets very, very hot, heats up to um, perhaps a thousand degrees centigrade. As it gets so hot, the gas gets superheated and gets pushed out the back of the firework. As the gas gets pushed out of the firework, the firework is pushed forwards, thinking of our Newton's third law from last lesson, action reaction pair. The gas gets hot, gas gets pushed out the back of the firework, and the firework gets pushed, gets pushed up into the sky. So mechanical work is done, which transfers the thermal energy to kinetic energy because it's moving fast and gravitational potential energy because it's traveling up. As it gets to the top of its um, top of its flight, it now has gravitational potential energy, might still have a bit of kinetic energy. And then finally, the firework explodes. And what kind of energy is given out by an exploding firework? We're going to have radiation of sound and light energy waves as the firework explodes. So those are our stores and pathways for a firework going off. Now I'm going to give you one more example and then I want you to try one yourself. So for a, here we have a solar power plant. You might not have ever seen how a solar power plant works. So I'll just very, very quickly take you through it. You've got the sun here. Hopefully you can recognize that. Sun's rays come down and hit these mirrors. They're called heliostats, but just think of them as mirrors. They focus the light onto this receiver, which is just a tank of water, essentially. The light is focused onto the tank of water, making it very hot, heating it up. You can see this red line is uh, a superheated uh, pipe of water or steam. And in the steam drum, the water is turned into steam just by heat from the receiver. That superheated steam passes through a turbine. A turbine is a set of angled blades, which if you pass air through it, will spin or steam or gas or whatever. They'll, it'll spin. So the steam is uh, pushed through the turbine, which makes it spin very fast. And then uh, this spins an electrical generator, which generates electrical power. And the, the steam is cooled down into water. Here we have cool steam. It's cooled back into water and then it is pumped back to the receiver to be heated up again and turned into steam. That is how a, a, one kind of solar um, power plant works. OK, so let's think about the energy transfer, the energy stores and the energy transfers. Energy stores, if you want 
stop the video now and have a go yourself. If this is straightforward, you know what's going on, then stop the video and have a go yourself. If you don't, however, then don't worry, let's go through. We've got thermal energy of the sun. We could go further back, but I don't want to. Let's just think the sun is very, very, very hot. So it radiates heat. We've got a pathway. Radiation, sorry, the light. Radiation of light energy, electromagnetic energy, it will be heat energy as well. But we've got radiation of energy from the sun, which hits those mirrors, bounces back and hits the receiver. So the energy pathway is radiation of light energy from the sun to the receiver. Turning so we've got thermal energy of sun as a store, and then radiation of light energy. And then we have thermal energy in the receiver is another store. That thermal energy, we're going to have a pathway here. The pathway is mechanical work by steam in the turbine. So the thermal energy in the receiver changes into mechanical energy, mechanical work, due to uh, as the water turns into steam, it forces its way through the turbine, which drives the turbine. So we have mechanical work done by the steam in the turbine. And then as the turbine is spinning, it turns, uh, it, it spins. Sorry, the mechanical work by the steam is to push the turbine. Uh, the turbine spins round. As it's spinning, it's moving. So we're storing energy is kinetic energy in the turbine. And then as it moves, it's mo the turbine moves magnetic uh, magnets uh, around a coil which generates electricity or electrical work in the generator. It forces charges to move, which is our electrical work. So don't worry, that's a very, that's a complicated example, okay? So don't worry if that was a bit too complicated for you. We've got some simpler stuff coming up. Okay, now your turn to do something. I want you to think of, so this is a swing boat. Uh, like at a fairground. I've seen this one in Hastings uh, Seafront as of this week. So I want you to have a think. What are the energy stores? I've given you the transfers. Oh, sorry, I've given you the pathways. I want you to think what are the energy stores uh, at point A, B and C if we have this big swing boat swinging from A to B to C. I've given you A. At A, the boat has gravitational potential energy. And as it drops down, as it swings, that's going to change. The pathway is mechanical work, but you don't need to worry about that. It's going to change into another form of energy, which it has at point B. And then as it comes up again, it's going to change into another form of energy. I want you to think what B and C are. Pause the video and try to write what the energy store is of the uh, swing boat at B and at C. Pause the video now. OK, let's go through. B, you should have kinetic energy, OK, because the boat is moving. It has gravitational potential energy at the top of its swing and then it swings down and that gravitational potential energy is transferred to kinetic energy and then back up to gravitational potential energy at C. OK. Another example, a boat, a power boat is accelerating. What is the energy transfer? So we have, I've given you a little bit of extra help here. The different, the eight energy stores are here. Some of them are a little bit hidden, but hopefully you can see them. And the four energy pathways. What I'd like you to try to answer is A and B. What is the um, potential energy? something energy in the fuel of the boat and what's the useful energy out as the boat is accelerating yeah in the middle don't worry too much about that that's just the energy in the um, boat's engine okay so we have something energy in fuel it's heated goes to thermal energy which does mechanical work which gets turned into something energy of the boat so pause the video and try to get a and b you're looking for the energy stores OK, going to hope that you paused it. You should have chemical energy in the fuel. So the fuel, so the, the energy that we store in uh, petrol, for example, uh, petrol has lots of uh, chemical bonds which uh, store energy we can release with chemical reactions. 
and in the engine of the boat that chemical energy in the fuel is transferred via thermal energy via heating thermal energy doing mechanical work to kinetic energy of the boat so the boat is pushed forward into the uh, into the water as we know it's accelerating it's getting faster as it's getting faster we're giving it more kinetic energy okay so what all of this uh, is building towards is that we can transfer um, different sorts of energy from one store of energy to another store of energy what we can't do however and this was revolutionary when it was first come up with what we can't do is destroy energy it never goes away we cannot destroy it often it dissipates which means it spreads out uh, so far out into into the uh, surroundings that we almost can't measure it but it never gets destroyed and this is our first it's called the first law of thermodynamics you may have seen it before i would like you to write it down in the book that you're doing your science work in energy cannot be created or destroyed only conserved conserved means to keep something so it, it can't be destroyed it can change forms but it can't be destroyed uh, pause the video to copy that down we're going to move on now okay so that was um transferring uh, energy stores and transfers or energy pathways energy stores and energy pathways we're now going to look at useful versus wasted energy for different kinds of machine appliances um, or just energy transfers okay so what i want you to do i think you can do a lot of this uh, already without my help when energy is transferred between stores some's always lost some is always lost to the surroundings we say this dissipated it's, it's wasted energy okay it's not it's not the useful energy that we want to get out now for each of these pictures each of these things i want you to write down what is the useful energy that we get out of that and it could be more than one and then we're looking for types of energy store here and what is the uh, so we're looking for energy transfers or types of energy store and what is the wasted energy in each of these examples and hopefully we'll see a pattern in what's often the kind of wasted energy okay you can pause the video and give that a go and then we'll go through okay let's go through if you haven't paused the video pause it now otherwise in the tv uh, so the useful kinds of energy we have sound and light energy out of the tv i um radiation is our useful energy out because we need to see it and we need to hear it if you've ever felt a tv felt the back of a tv you might well feel it's very hot um more modern more efficient tvs get less hot but older tvs get very very hot the wasted energy from a tv is heat we don't need that heat energy we're not we don't use a tv to heat a room so the heat energy is wasted for a light bulb again the useful energy is light energy or uh, radiation if you put the pathway radiation light energy radiation and the wasted energy is the same it's heat so light bulb works by heating up an uh, uh, a, a, an element an old stool light bulb works by heating up an element to a very very hot temperature um, and as it heats up to that hot temperature it starts to give out light unfortunately it also gives out heat we don't use a light bulb to heat a room so that heat energy given out by the light bulb is wasted we say that's wasted the light energy is the energy that we want for the motorcycle the useful energy we want for a motorcycle is kinetic energy the motorcycle is a machine which transfers from uh, chemical energy in the fuel ultimately to kinetic energy in the motorcycle wasted energy you could have heat and uh, you could also have sound energy you know how loud a motorcycle sounds um, so heat energy is wasted 
thermal energy and um, sound energy radiation is wasted and for our phone the useful kinds of energy for the for our iPhone are um, sound and light the screen uh, gives off light and if we're watching something then we might be listening to the speakers so that'll be sound or if we're on a call that'll be sound so the useful energy is going to be sound and light and if you fancy you could also say uh, radio radio waves or radiation radio radiation is useful because that's how it communicates to the um, uh, to the phone tower the wasted energy for a phone you might not see it always but if you if you're watching a lot of films or you're playing uh, games uh, you might see your phone gets hot and as the uh, electricity flows around the phone in the internal components it gets hot and we waste energy in the form of, of heat energy okay we can show this so the total energy that we put in a conservation of energy tells us that we can't destroy energy that was our first law of thermodynamics that we've just gone over we can't destroy energy so the energy that we put in must be equal to the useful energy that we get out plus the wasted energy because we if we put energy in it's got to go somewhere we can't destroy it, it we've got the energy that we want out of our appliance or whatever and we've got the wasted energy that we would like to use if we could to make it more efficient, but we but it's wasted, we can't use it. No machine, no transfer of energy is ever 100% efficient. We can never get 100% of the energy out that we put in when we transfer different kinds of energy. We can show these energy transfers and the useful energy and the wasted energy with something that we call a Sankey diagram. Uh, the Sankey diagram shows the amount of energy transferred in a situation and the width of the arrows represents the amount of energy. So you can imagine this like one big arrow coming in for the input energy. It's like the back end of the arrow and then it goes forward. And the, the arrow which goes straight forward is our useful energy. You can see they've labeled it. So here we've got 40 joules of it, sorry, 100 joules of energy in on this machine could be a, a light bulb for example and we get 40 joules of useful energy light energy radiation radiant light energy out and 60 joules of wasted energy in the form of heat energy as it says the width of the arrow represents the amount of energy so this will be for example uh, 10 centimeters thickness this will be four centimeters and this will be six centimeters in thickness. OK, so I'd like you to bear, bear that in mind. Think of our e equation that we had total energy in is equal to useful energy output plus wasted energy. And have a go at this um, some this calculation 30 seconds a fan requires 30 joule, 300 joules of electrical energy 170 joules are lost as wasted thermal energy 10 joules are lost as wasted sound energy how much is converted to useful kinetic energy remember energy cannot be created or destroyed only changed form Da -da 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 okay, if you wrote 120, you're on gold. If you're at 130, you're on silver. If you wrote 290, you're on the bronze for the next sheet, the next exercise. So why is it 120? We've got 170 lost as thermal energy, 10 joules lost as wasted as sound energy. Put those together, and we have all together 180 joules lost as wasted energy we've put 300 joules in at start we've lost 180 so take 180 away from 300 and you have 120 joules okay so what i'd like to do is to quickly uh, copy out the table and fill in the values if you're on bronze i'd like you to complete all of the table if you're on silver you can skip these these rows and just do from this row if you're on gold just do these bottom three rows. And also, as additional task, think of what the useful energy and the wasted energy is in each example. 
what kinds of energy are there? Okay, I appreciate that uh, it's going to be difficult to fill in this table at the bottom there because uh, I'm in the way. I've tried to move me out the way, so we'll see if that works. The computer's really slow at the moment. Um, so there we go. So I'd like you to, oh, and then, sorry, PQ, if you finish gold, go on to the PQ. We see you've got a human being here. What do you think is the wasted energy as a human? What might be the useful energy and the wasted energy? It's kind of a continuation of the gold. Um, and just to help you out for the first one for bronze, for the light bulb, here we've got the energy into a light bulb, so the electrical energy that we put into a light bulb. We've said the useful energy we get out of a light bulb is light energy. The wasted energy is heat or thermal energy. Uh, we've got 12 useful 12 joules of useful energy out. We've got 60 joules in. So energy in, as we've got here, must equal useful energy out plus wasted energy. If I want the wasted energy, then I need to take the useful energy away from the total energy in. So 60 minus 12 is going to be 48 joules. Yeah? So just rearrange the equation if necessary. Whatever comes in, this side must come out this side. Mm -hmm. These two must add up to this one. OK, I'd like you now to pause the, pause the video and give that a go. You can pause the video now. OK, let's see if you got it right. Energy saving light bulb, 30 joules in, uh, 22 useful out and eight wasted energy for a car 20,000 useful energy joules laptop 40 energy uh, 40 joules go in tv 120 joules of wasted energy patio heater 2000 joules go in human being 86 joules of useful energy output okay for gold what's useful and wasted in each example light bulb useful light wasted thermal uh, light or radiation. Energy saving light bulb, exactly the same. Car, useful energy output, kinetic energy. Wasted energy, any other kind of energy. Uh, thermal, um, thermal energy, sound energy, uh, electrical energy you could have as useful as well. Laptop, we've got useful energy out would be sound and light. Wasted energy will be heat or thermal energy see a pattern often the wasted energy we have is thermal tv useful energy out sound and light wasted thermal energy heater energy output will be thermal energy wasted energy now for this one it'll be thermal energy which is radiated away from the person who's on the patio yeah because that's not what we want it to do we want it to heat the person on the patio human being useful energy output you could think there's so many you could have, but big ones would be kinetic energy if I go for a run. Uh, could be sound energy. I want to produce sound. Um, and the wasted energy, or could be um, mental energy, brain calculations. The wasted energy for a human being tends to be, unless it's very cold and I need to stay hot, is thermal energy. I can't exist as a human without create without um, giving off thermal energy all the time. That's why I have to eat much more than I would need to if we could uh, if we were perfectly perfect machines at converting chemical energy in our food to kinetic energy, for example, to move. But every time we use our muscles to give ourselves kinetic energy, we also release thermal energy. As you know, if you've ever been for a run, you get very hot. Okay, last part of the lesson. Very well done if you've got this far. Um, and that is efficiency calculations. How can we calculate the efficiency of a machine? What does that mean? Here we've got a old style filament light bulb and a new style modern efficient light bulb. Oh, let's move me out of the way down to the bottom. It'll take a while, but it will move. Efficiency is a measure of how good a device is at changing energy from one form to another. The more efficient a device is, the less energy it will waste. 
Okay, I'd like you all to pause the video and copy down the definition for efficiency. Well done. Let's have a look, see which one's more efficient. So for our filament light bulb, it, the filament is heated up to a very high temperature, which gives off a huge amount of heat energy. We don't need, want that heat energy given off. It also gives out a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of light energy relative to the heat energy. The light energy is the only bit we want. So this is why old style light bulbs are so inefficient. Their efficiency is very low. For a modern, efficient light bulb, they still give off heat energy. We can't get away from that. But the amount of heat energy they give off is much smaller relative to the amount of light energy we get out. They're much more efficient. All modern electrical appliances uh, bought in this country must have must be labelled with how efficient they are. And you can see here it is energy for a washing machine, for example, where A is more efficient, it will use less energy because less energy will be wasted um, compared to a less efficient washing machine, which would be labelled as G. OK, now we can calculate the energy efficiency of any appliance using this equation. Efficiency is equal to the useful energy that I get out of something divided by the total energy I put into something. Now, it, efficiency can either be a number between 0 and 1, or we normally convert it to a percentage, and we do that by multiplying by 100. So divide the useful energy out by the total energy in, multiply by 100. Here we go. Let's have a look at our light bulbs and calculate how efficient they are. For our old style filament lamp, we've got 100 joules go in. Light energy out, we've got two joules. Thermal, therefore, they haven't labelled it, but it must be um, 98 joules. This is handy, because it's 100 joules, going to be super easy calculation. The useful energy out is two. The total energy in is 100. So the efficiency is going to be two divided by 100. And then we're going to turn it into percentage. So we're going to multiply it by 100 right afterwards. Um, 2 divided by 100 multiplied by 100 is 2. 2% 2 efficient. That is a diabolical efficiency. And that's why these filament lamps are, are being phased out quite fast uh, for more efficient lights, such as LED lights, light emitting diodes. Here we go. The amount of energy we need to put in is much lower. You can see we're putting 4 joules in. We're getting 0 0.8 joules out. Uh, useful energy and 3.2 joules is thermal energy, wasted energy. The useful energy out is 0 0.8. We divide to get the efficiency, we divide it by 4. 0 0.8 divided by 4 is going to be, mm, I think it's going to be 0 0.2. And then multiply by 100 is going to be 20%. So it's 10 times more efficient than our filament lamp. 2% efficiency and 20% efficiency. Have a go at this one. Uh, not quite as trivial as the 100 joules. This is a, uh, let's say it's a light bulb again. We've got 80 joules of energy being put into the light bulb. We're taking out 20 joules of useful energy, light, and 60 joules of wasted energy. For example, thermal energy. What do you think the efficiency of this, uh, we call it a light bulb, could be any appliance, is? 0.25 or 25%, 0.75 or 75%, or any other answer? It says 30 seconds. You can just pause, spend however long it takes you, and, uh, oh, no, 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 it should be 30 seconds, shouldn't it? Okay, yeah, calculate. You've got 20 more seconds, and then we're going to go through. <laughs> flip back onto the equation. There you go. You pause or you can just flip back anyway. Okay, the answer is if you put 25% or 0.25, that's gold. You're going to get gold. Uh, if you put 0.75, silver, any other bronze. So 20 divided by 80 multiplied by 100 gives you 25%. And that was actually, uh, there's no need for gold, silver, bronze, because I want you all to do this. Okay, I would like you, this is our last uh Part of the of the lesson before we go into our exit ticket to copy this table out 
you can do it very, very quickly. Um, or if you don't want to, you just put D D E F G H I J, and a way to try to answer uh, to get the answers for A to J. So look at our table. The first box has been done completely. So we've got different devices, the energy that we put in and the energy that comes out, the different forms of energy that come out. To do your efficiency calculation, you need to work out the useful energy, which is coming out, and then you need to, to, to calculate the efficiency, put it into this equation. Useful energy divided by total energy in and multiplied by 100. The first one, just to help you out if you're really struggling with the PSP, we got 275 joules in. The useful energy out is going to be light and sound, 75 plus 90. So you see useful energy out, light plus sound, 75 plus 90. The efficiency, therefore, is going to be 75 plus 90, which is going to be 165, divided by 275. That's the total energy in, which will give us our efficiency of, and I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, I think it's 0 0.6. I think it's 60% or 0.6. Okay, pause the video and answer A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. We see we start skipping steps as we go down. Okay, we're looking for energy in, energy out, useful energy and efficiencies. Okay, pause the video now. Okay, let's see if you're right. A, 75, B, 90 joules. Uh, C, 165 joules, D, 60%, E, is 1,000 joules, add those up, F, 300 plus 375, those are the useful ones, heat is wasted in a TV, G is 675 divided by 1,000, which is 0 0.675 or 67.5%, H, 350 joules, I, 400 joules, J, 400 divided by 750. G equals 53%. Okay, we're on to the exit ticket. Well done if you've made it this far. Hopefully that has helped you with your understanding of energy and energy transfers. Number one, state the conservation of energy law. That was our first law of thermodynamics. Now you should have that written down somewhere, so that should be straightforward. B, 1B, fill in the gaps in the flow diagram showing the energy stored when a bouncy ball is dropped, falls to the floor and bounces back up again. Don't worry about the energy pathways. I just want to know the energy stores. OK, so look back at those eight energy stores and think if I drop a bouncy ball and I'm dropping it, I'm not throwing it, I'm dropping it. What happens? You've got gravitational potential energy at the start. It's converted into one kind and then another and then another and then back up to another. OK. C, the bouncy ball is dropped from a height of two meters. It's on a second, it's on its second bounce. So when it comes back up, it only reaches 1.7 meters high. Explain why this does not break the conservation of energy law, the, uh, the law of thermodynamics. First law of thermodynamics. And D, can you name three examples of transfers between energy stores in daily life? We, this is stuff that we, th we see, we deal with every single day, almost every second of every day, energy is being transferred um, in our lives. So think of three energy transfers, or transfers between energy stores. Number two, I'm always in the way, aren't I? Right. What are the energy inputs and outputs? So uh, remember, we've got the useful, we've got the total energy in, we've got useful energy out, and we've got wasted energy out. Okay. So what are those kinds? What are the forms of energy uh, in and out for useful and wasted for a TV? B. Identify the useful energy transfers in the television. What types of energy in? in uh, what types of energy out of the television are useful? C, what is the efficiency of the television in percent? And three, complete the table below by filling in the labeled gaps. So we've got I, 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 and IV. I'd like to complete those gaps for those appliances, calculating the efficiency. Whoop. Okay. 
thanks very much uh, for joining me. I'm looking forward immensely to seeing you next week, um, where we will be doing we will be doing CP4 waves, uh, which is going to be super fun. So looking forward to seeing you again next week. Thanks again for joining. Goodbye.